everyone, I'm Lauren Noel, and today I want to talk a little bit more about why I am a high-risk pregnancy and how that is affecting me. Those of you who are new to my channel may not have heard little snippets in the past that I've sprinkled throughout my videos um, on my health history and my story and both pre-pregnancy and early in this pregnancy. So I have Crohn's disease. If you aren't familiar with Crohn's disease, it is a type of inflammatory bowel disease similar to ulcerative colitis. Um, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are the two most popular, um, most common names, um, but there are other parts of that out there. And they affect people in many different ways. They can affect any part of the digestive tract, which means your symptoms could be completely you know, different and you could have different issues with flares and there's different treatments, there's different medications, there are different surgeries. A whole ton of different things can happen based on what your individual case is. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease at the age of 19 um, because I had an abscess develop. And an abscess is basically a little pocket inside your skin of infection. Uh, my abscesses are caused, and those infections are caused by fistula tracts, which are little tracts in the body that are not supposed to be there. <laughs> and they are carrying um, infection and waste and things like that to places that they shouldn't be. So, needless to say, there are things in my body that don't work quite the way they're supposed to. And because of that, I was given that diagnosis of Crohn's. My mother also has it. There are some genetic links. Um, I have a fairly mild case. However, when I do have flare-ups and I do have issues with abscesses or infections in the abscess area, it becomes extremely painful and it requires antibiotics or surgery. I've had at least five surgeries in the past year since I was diagnosed to treat um, to clean out and to try to um, heal up those fistula tracts and take care of the abscesses and the infections. So in my body, um, where I have these abscesses, I don't talk about the particular area because it's TMI and believe me, you don't want to know. So <laughs> I just say that it is a very painful area to have them and I have a tubing that they put in my last surgeries um, to try to keep the fistula tract draining to prevent the creation of abscesses. While my disease may not always be active, it is still a very big concern on their minds and doctors are very wary of um, both the location and the circumstance revolving my condition. When I was diagnosed, my first GI doctor, um, my gastroenterologist, told me that if I was going to have children, I would probably have to have C-sections, that most women with Crohn's are told they need C-sections. Now, that is not necessarily true. I now see a GI doctor that specializes in women with IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, and she says the only time that they recommend that you have a C-section is if you have... Um, active or reoccurring disease in somewhere in the lower region where it would make it um, very dangerous or complicated to do a regular regular vaginal birth. Um, in my case, that is that is the case. Um, so they highly recommend that I would go for a C-section to prevent um, further damage, uh, infection tons of other complications that could happen. They just don't want to go there because the risks are just too high. Both my GI doctor and my regular OB agree that this is the best way for us to proceed. Um, they also do not want me to go past term, which is why they probably will be doing a C-section at around 39 weeks or before if I go into labor before that. Um, just because the longer I'm holding a baby that's growing bigger and bigger, the more pressure is being put on my organs and my intestines. And again, there's just more and more danger for further complications and further damage that we just don't want to deal with. 
So when I began seeing my, uh, my GI who specializes in pregnancy in IBD patients, she is at the forefront of the research for um, women with these diseases, women who are taking medications, women who are not taking medications, and she has been doing a huge study um, for, I believe they've been doing it for at least four years, and I am now a part of the study. And what they have found is that women with Crohn's or other diseases like this we do not have an increased risk of infertility, but once we are pregnant, we have a much higher risk of complications. So there's a higher rate of miscarriages, higher rate of preterm labor, higher, weight, um, higher rate of low birth weight infants. They have a harder time gaining weight during the pregnancy. Um, I believe there's an increased chance for preeclampsia. There's just, you know, there's just a lot of increased risks for a lot of things. So that is why I am being treated as a high risk pregnancy. Um, first, because I have a illness. Second, because I am on medication for that illness that does affect baby. And three, um, because I am at risk for all these complications because of the medication and the diagnosis. So all of those things combined all my doctors are just watching me very carefully. Now my OB, um, the OBs that I see, they're pretty easy going. Just that, you know, as long as everything is going well, you're not experiencing, you know, too many flares or anything, then we're not too concerned. Um, a lot of times people with Crohn's will find that their disease goes away during pregnancy. Now, I haven't experienced a flare since last fall. Um, I had a little infection, so, you know, I'm hoping that that stays away and that I don't experience anything for the rest of the pregnancy, but, you know, if it does, then there are things that they're going to have to deal with. They'll have to put me on a low-risk antibiotic or do a low-risk, um, not necessarily surgery, but um, they can, like, deal with abscesses in the office and stuff like that. Um, but my GI also recommended that I see a high-risk OB, which is a perinatologist, and it just so happens that my OB's office sends us to the perinatologist for our 20-week ultrasound. So that was where I first connected with the perinatologist. And that doctor said, you know what, because you have Crohn's, you know, it's probably fine. But we like to monitor babies every single month with the growth scan because of the low birth weight babies not thriving. Issues like that. They just want to make sure the baby is growing properly and healthy and that everything is going well. So that is the reason that I go in for monthly growth scans at the perinatologist. So I have my GI who looks over my pregnancy and if I have any issues with the Crohn's in the pregnancy, I go to her. I have my regular OBs who just kind of monitor the pregnancy in general and everything that's going on. And then I have the perinatologist who is really watching baby's weight and size growth. Those are my doctors and my team for this. And like I said, the reason that I've known since the beginning that I would be having a C-section is because I was told way before this ever happened um, that that was going to be my, pretty much my only choice. Um, and I've struggled with that. I have really struggled with that. I am the type of person that would love to have a natural birth. I would love it so much but that's just not the way it's going to be for me. And because of the surgeries and the, you know, the damage that has already been done to my body, I don't think that even if, you know, they said that like, you're disease free or anything like that, I, I would not feel comfortable doing a vaginal birth because I don't know what kind of damage could be done. There's just some really severe things that could happen and I'm not willing to risk that. A little bit of information about the, the medication that I've taken. Um, ever since I was first diagnosed, they put me on Humira, which is a immunosuppressant, and I'm not gonna go into all that it does, but basically it reduces inflammation, and, and it's used a lot in both Crohn's and then also with arthritis. So in their studies, they have found that Humira is the category B drug, so it does affect baby, but it doesn't, 
they haven't noticed that it harms baby in any way. So it does actively cross the placenta in the second and third trimesters. And it, it's also found in like nanoparticles in breast milk, but they still encourage um, women to breastfeed because they don't think that it's really any um, impact on the child. So they say that they have not found increased infections in infants that have been exposed to this in the womb. However, they do not allow them to get any live vaccines in the first six months of life. So she will not be getting rotavirus, for instance. That's the only live vaccine that's given in the United States under six months of age. You know, obviously, I would, again, love to not be on any medication during pregnancy and not um, and not expose her to any of this medication, uh, but I don't really have a choice. Um, they believe that if they take the mother off of the medication, that's risking not keeping the mother healthy, which is not going to keep baby healthy. So again, there's lots of pros and cons and we decided to stay on the medication. They will take me off of it um, three weeks before my scheduled C-section um, just to try to clear out my system as much as possible before birth. And that's basically just all their plan is for the medication. So I think that's pretty much it as to why I am considered high risk and what kind of doctors I see and how that's playing out in my pregnancy. Um, if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. I appreciate you following my journey. I've gotten lots of questions about this both on YouTube and um, in conversations with people in daily life. I know high-risk pregnancies are kind of still an unknown thing to a lot of people and um, I'm just learning about it just as I go along too. So <laughs> thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. For my mom, um, she is hooked on the hand soap that I make with orange and lavender. She already has lavender but she needs some orange so I got her a bottle of that.